The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. I am Four Gala Nelson, computer science teacher. I will be teaching you computer science four from four. We will start our lesson with the correction of the assignment. In the previous lesson, we learned how to convert from base 10 to base 2, 8, and 16. I have an assignment to convert 24 to base 2. And then we saw two methods to convert. In the first method, we had to divide the number by the base, then divide the quotient by the base, and verify if the quotient is zero, and keep on dividing on to keep on dividing by the quotient until the quotient is zero. So let's apply the first step. We are about to convert 24 to base 2. So the base here is 2. So with this method, we'll divide 24 by 2. The answer will be 12 remainder 0. Then we have to divide on the quotient by 2. 12 divided by 2. So divide the quotient by 2. 12 divided by 2 will give us 6 remainder 0. And we have to keep on verifying is the quotient 0? 6 is not 0, so we'll divide. 6 divided by 2. The answer is 3 remainder 0. 3 is not 0, so we'll keep on dividing. 3 divided by 2. The answer is 1 remainder 1. The quotient is not still 0, and we keep on dividing by the quotient. 1 divided by 2, the answer is 0 remainder 1. This time the quotient is 0, so we stop dividing. What we have to do next now is to start from the most recent remainder and write the number. So step 3, we are supposed to write the number from the most recent remainder to the least recent remainder. That will give us the answer. 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, base 2. So 24 base 10 is equivalent to 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, base 2. Let's correct the same assignment using the column method. With the column method, we're expected to write powers of 2 from 1 up to the number that's strictly greater than or directly greater than the number we are about to convert. In this case, we are going to write 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, then 32 because 32 is the first power of 2 that's greater than 24. So we'll write them on a column like this. Then, the next step, we have to compare the greatest power of 2 on our table. So we start from the left, we compare the greatest power of 2 to the number we want to convert. If that number, if the power of, if the power of 2 is greater than the number, we write 0. Else, else here means that power of 2 is less than or equal to the number. Then in that case, we write 1 and subtract and subtract, I insist, I insist, 
and we subtract the power of 2 from, we subtract the number from the power of 2. We subtract the number from the power of 2. So let's go ahead and see. 32, the power of 2 we are considering, is greater than 24. In this case, write 0. And then we move to the next power of 2, which is 16. We compare now again 16 and 24. We'll see that 16 is less than 24. Since it's less than 24, we'll write 1, then subtract 16 from 24. So we'll subtract 16 from 24 to have 8. Then we write 1. We'll now have to go to the next power of 2, and this time we'll compare it with the result of the subtraction 8. So we're comparing 8 and 8. And we'll see that 8 is equal to 8. We said this. If the power of 2 is greater than the number we're taking, then we write 0 in it. In any other case, we write 1. So 8 equal to 8. We'll subtract 8 from 8, and then we'll write 1. So 8 minus 8 will give us 0, and then we have to write down 1. Then we take the next power of 2, which is 4, and continue with compare it with 0. 4 is greater than 0, so we write 0. We go to the next power of 2, this time it's 2. 2 is greater than 0, so we write 0. We go to the next power of 2 here, it's 1. 1 is greater than 0, so we write 0. And then we've covered all the columns in the table. We write the answer as same. 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, base 2. Because zeros that come before the most significant digit or symbol can be ignored. So the answer is 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, base 2. In the next assignment, we had to convert 285 to base 16. Same strategy, we divide the number by the target base. This time the target base is 16. 285 divided by 16 gives us 17 remainder 13. But this 13 we are writing must be a base 16, 16 symbol. And 1, 3 is not a base 16 symbol. So we have to look for the register of 1, 3, which is D. So we're supposed to write 17 remainder D. Is 17 0? No. So we divide 17 by 16 to get 1 remainder 1. Is 1 equal to 0? No. So we divide 1 by 16 to get 0 remainder 1. We write from the most recent to the least recent to get the answer 1, 1, D base. 16. Let's enter into our lesson of today. Our lesson of today is our conversion again, but this time we're converting from any base to base 10. More precisely from base 2, 8, and 16 to base 10. The lesson is planned as follows. We'll, have to, we'll see the objectives of the lesson, what you're expected to do, at the end of the lesson, what you would expect to accomplish at the end of the lesson, the prerequisite, what you must know to easily understand this lesson, then we'll see a real life application of conversion between number systems, then we'll present the key concepts, get to do some exercises, and then you have an assignment. At the end of this lesson, we'll be able to convert from base 2, 8, and 16 to base 10. So this lesson will enable you to convert from base 2, 8, and 16 to base 10. And to ease your understanding or your attainment of this objective, you have to be able to calculate powers of numbers, multiply two numbers, and identify the most significant symbol or digit and the least significant symbol or digit of a given number. Let's check your readiness for this lesson with an exercise. 
compute the following expressions. A, 2 to the power 0. B, 2 to the power 1. C, 16 to the power 0. And D, 10 to the power 1. Select 2. Compute the following expressions again. 1 times 16, 0 times 2, and 0 times 16. And we have a third exercise that's asking you to label the most significant digit or symbol and the least significant digit or symbol of the following numbers. 1101, 189 16, 69 16, and 10000 base 2. Okay. 2 to the 0. What's the answer? 2 to the 0 equals to 1. Actually, any number raised to the power 0 is 1. Any number raised to the power 0 is 1. Next, 2 to the 1. 2 to the 1 is equal to 2. Any number raised to the power 1 is that number. So 2 raised to the 1 will give us 2. So any number raised to the power 1 is 1. 10 to the 1 is 1. 50 to the 1 is, 10 to the 1 is 10. 50 to the 1 is 50. So continue with the same principle. 60 to the 0 will give us 1. And 10 to the 1 will give us 10. The second exercise, computing the following expressions. 1 times 16. 1 times 16 will give us 16. Any number times 1 gives us the same number. Any number times 1, or any number multiplied by 1, gives us the same number. 0 times 2 this time. 0 times 2 will give us 0. You have to keep in mind that what? Any number multiplied by 0 gives 0. Any number multiplied by 0 gives 0. 0 times 16, applying the same principle. Any number multiplied by 0 gives 0. So we're going to have zero. Now, the next third exercise is on labeling the most significant symbol and the least significant symbol in a number. You have to keep in mind that the most significant symbol is the non-zero digit or symbol found at the top left. Find at the left, far most left of your number. Why the least significant digit is the number, this time it can be 0 or 1, or any digit found at the far most right of your number. So, most significant is the farthest to the left, while the least significant is the farthest to the right. So, if we want to look at this number a bit, we'll see that what the most significant digit is. The least of is 1, as the labeled, and 1, and the most significant digit is this. So this is the least significant digit, and this is the most significant digit. Same thing for this. The least significant digit is 9. The most significant digit is 1. Next. Here again, the least significant digit is 9. The most significant digit is 6. And here, the least significant digit is 0. And the most significant digit is 1. So let's see a real life application of this lesson. John and Paul like drawing. John's software permits him to enter colors in decimal. Why in Paul's software, colors are entered in? Binary. Remember, decimals are base 10 numbers, while binary are base 2 numbers. John wants to use Paul's color of code 1101. You are expected to help him by giving him the representation of 1101 in base 10. How are you expected to do it? That's what you do it by converting. By converting from base 2 to base 10. And what's the principle of converting from a given base to base 10? 
What's the principle? We have a three-step strategy here that we're going to follow. Step one, you write down the positional parameter of each symbol. What's the positional parameter of a symbol? And how do we write it? When you are given a number, you start from the least significant digit and write zero, one, two, three, four, until you reach the most significant digit. That's how you achieve the positional parameter of a number. In step two, you are expected to write down the positional value of each symbol. The positional value of a symbol is gotten by writing the base raised to the power of the positional parameter of that symbol. So if we have a number and we need the positional value, you take the base and raise it to the power of the positional parameter. See an example soon. And in the third step, you multiply each symbol by its positional value and add the results. So you multiply each symbol by its positional value, then you add the results. Let's apply this with an example, checking out a real life application where we have to convert 1101 base 2 to base 10. So we can get the color code of the color in base 10. So step one, we're supposed to write down the positive parameter of each symbol. So we have 1101 base 2. Starting from the least significant digit, we write 0, 1, 2, 3 to reach the most significant digit. So in this case, we have 0, 1, 2, and 3. We are the most significant digit. We end there. Those are the positional parameters of each digit. Next, we write the positional value. Here, we write the base raised to the power of the positional parameter for each symbol. We had this, and these were the positional parameters. Now, to get the positional value for the most, the least significant digit, we we'll have two to the zero. To get the one for the next digit, we we'll have two to the one, then two to the two, then two to the three. Step three now, we're expected to multiply each digit or symbol by its positional value. So we we'll have. 1 times 2 to the 3, then we'll have 1 times 2 to the 2, then we'll have 0 times 2 to the 1, then we'll have 1 times 2 to the 0, and then we have to add the results. Let's add, add, and add. Now, 2 to the 3 equal 8, 2 to the 2 is 4, 2 to the 1 is 2, and 2 to the 0 is 1. So 1 times 8 plus 1 times 4 plus 0 times 2 plus 1 times 1. We get 8 plus 4 plus 0 plus 1, that gives us 13. So the color code here in decimal is 13. Let's continue with some exercises. Here we're expected to convert 10B base 16 to base 10. Then we're also expected to convert 1001 base 2 to base 10. And we're expected to convert 107 base 8 to base 10. Let's start with the first one. 10B base 60 to base 10. Step 1. We we'll expect to write the positional parameter of each symbol. So here we have 10B base 16. Positional parameter, we start from the least significant digit. And write 0, 1, 2. So let's go ahead. 0, 1, 2. Step 2. We write the positional value of each symbol. We already have the positional parameters. To get the positional value, we have to write the base. Remember, the base raised to the power of the positional parameter. The base. And here the base is 16. So we'll start. That of B will be 60 to the 0. That of 0 will be 16 to the 1. And that of 1 will be 16 to the 2. In the third step, we have to multiply each symbol by its positional value and then add the results. 
So we have 1 times 60 squared. Then we have 0 times 60 to the 1. And then we have b times 16 to the 0. But when we are computing values in this method, base 16 symbols like a, b, c, d, e, f, instead of using them for computation, we use their base 10 representations. And b has a base 10 representation of 11. A has a base temperature of 10, B 11, C 12, C 13, E 14, and F 15. So we'll replace B by 11. Replace B by 11. Now we have to add 16 squared is 256, 16 to the 1 is 16, and 16 to the 0 is 1. Adding all this, end up with 267. So, 10B base 16 is equivalent to 267 base 10. Second exercise, we expect to convert 1000 base 2 to base 10. First thing, we write the positional parameter of each symbol in. So, we have it, start with 0, 1, 2, 3. Then, next step, we bring out the positional value of each symbol. In the next step, we have to write down the positional value of each symbol. So, We'll start again, 2, because our base here now is 2, 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, and 2 to the 3. And then we have the positional parameters, we have the positional values. The next step is to multiply each symbol by its positional value. Step three, we multiply a symbol by its positional value. In that case, we'll have one times two to the three, then zero times two to the two, then zero times two to the one, and then one times two to the zero. After that, we have to add. Add and add. 2 to the 3 is 8. 2 to the 3 is equivalent to 2 times 2 times 2. Not 2 times 3, but 2 times 2 times 2. And that gives us 8. 2 to the 2 is 2 times 2. That gives us 4. 2 to the 1 is 2. And 2 to the 0 is 1. Remember, anything raised to the 0 is 1. And anything raised to the 1 is that thing itself. So we'll have this. Then 1 times 8 gives us. 8, 0 times anything gives 0, so 0 times 4 will give 0, 0 times 2 will give 0, and 1 times 1 will give 1. The answer is 9. Thus, 1001 0, 0, 1 base 2 is equal to 9 in base 10. We move to the third exercise. This time we have to convert 107 base 8. To base 10. 107 base 8 to base 10. Same strategy. We'll write the positional parameters of each symbol 0, 1, 2. Next strategy, step 2. We'll write the positional value of each digit. So in step 2, we'll write the positional value of each digit. This time, we'll have to write. 8 to the 0, 8 to the 1, and 8 to the 2. Why? Because we are in base 8. Remember, to get the positional value, you write the base raised to the power, the positional parameter. If we are in base 2, it will be 2. If we are in base 6, 16, it will be 16. If we are in base 8, it will be 8. In this case, we are in base 8. So we have 8 to the 0, then 8 to the 1, then 8 to the 2. What next?
step three. That's what's next. In step three, we are supposed to multiply each digit or symbol by its positional value. So we have to do one times eight to the two, zero times eight to the one, and seven times eight to the zero. One times eight to the two, zero times eight to the one, and seven times eight to the zero. Eight to the two is equivalent to eight times eight. That gives us 64. Eight to the one is eight, and eight to the zero is one. So we have one times 64 plus zero times eight plus seven times one. We we'll have 71 because one times 64 is 64. Zero times eight is zero, and seven times one is seven. 64 plus seven will give us 71. Thus, 107 base 8 is equal to 71 in base 10. Come check out your understanding with this assignment. First exercise, first question. Convert 1, 1, 1, 1 base 2 to base 10. Convert 1, 1, 1, 1, base 2, to base 10. Second exercise, convert 1, A, 9, base 16, to base 10. So you're supposed to apply the methods we've seen in this lesson. You're supposed to write down the positional parameters, write down the positional values, multiply the digits by the positional values, sum the results and get the answer. You also have to make sure that you check the basis when you're writing the positional value. We have a number in base two and another number in base 16. So that's your assignment. To prepare this lesson, we use following resources, Gateway to Computer Science for the senior ordinary level and web resources. Our next lesson, will be on conversion again. But this time, we'll be converting from base two to base eight and 16, and from base eight and 16 to base two. Unna tege si ma tege yob Unna tege minga ma tege nyum Unna tege ma jang ma tege ndom Ma ne tambia ninya ne njubya yen Ngani bana ma tege mot Ngani la kiri wa tege ndong Esa kina bia jinki do Ma ne tambia ninya ne njubya yen Tam tama mote tam zabike Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen 